Um, so my uh, uh, surname is uh, Demendov, uh, and I'm a founder of uh, Crowdspace. Uh, Crowdspace is a group of people um, uh, of, uh, from different countries, like uh, USA, Russia, Spain, Germany. And we are entrepreneurs, uh, analysts, economists, uh, urban planners. And uh, we are joined to, uh, to basically facilitate uh, sustainable, sustainable development on Earth and expansion to space. Uh, and that's why we are here. Uh, and at the same time, we are the finalist of uh, the consent uh, of the contest uh, on uh, Mars Colony Prize Design, and this is a um, contest for uh, to design uh, Mars Colony for 1,000 people. Uh, and with this team, we made it to the final. And uh, one of the parts that we have in this design is basically how to how to feed people who live in this colony of uh, 1,000 people. And uh, in order to start, let me br briefly guide you through uh, how we see this colony, like very briefly. Uh, we are going to put this colony in uh, Valles Marineris uh, because uh, it has like very nice um, temperature conditions, of course, nice for, for, for Mars. Uh, it has lower radiation because there are like uh, large, large slopes that uh, shelter, uh, shelter from radiation. Uh, there are liquid water there, and uh, there are also a lot of uh, geological features that are very beneficial. And uh, this is how we see it. Uh, so you can see the uh, slope where we are going to put this colony. And, uh, and the reason for this is that we can use this slope to put some living quarters inside and there are some on-surface infrastructure and finally you can see the greenhouses uh, where we will uh, where we will grow the food and uh, i will focus mostly on these greenhouses uh, how they work uh, and how to grow the food inside these uh, greenhouses um, so yeah, here's the basic assumptions uh, on what we have for uh, for this like for, for this colony. Uh, so we have nutrition balance uh, with a bit reduced uh, containment of uh, fats, uh, and most of these fats are unsaturated, and it means that basically people can uh, can live with this amount of fat, and it will be probably even more healthy than uh, we uh, have now on Earth. Uh, all the calculations are made for 1,000 colonists, and uh, we used uh, 3x backup uh, just in case of one la lasting dust storm or emergencies that require colony to, uh, to be evacuated. And uh, for this, uh, colonists will have to wait for like up to two, uh, two years to, to get back to Earth. Uh, and uh, we analyzed over 70 uh, different product items, and we analyzed it based on nutrition facts, uh, areas that are required to grow the food, uh, water requirements, and energy requirements. Uh, so here is some part of our work. Uh, so this is basically a table uh, that we used to do this analysis. And here you can see uh, all the different product items on the left. And uh, you can see how many calories are uh, contained in, in 100 gram. You can see uh, proteins, fats, carb carbohydrates, uh, and uh, different productivity parameters like uh, kilogram per square meter that we can get uh, if we grow uh, this type of product, uh, number of harvest per year, uh, water requirements, uh, kilocalories that we can get uh, through the Mars Martian year, uh, and as well how much uh, proteins, fats, and carbohydrates uh, we can get uh, through Martian year uh, from one square meter. And analyzing this table, you can see that uh, there are several like, clear winners uh, among, uh, among these uh, categories. 
uh, for different types of uh, nutrients that, that, that are needed for humans. And, uh, well, here is how we selected the, the food that should be grown. Uh, first, uh, uh, the, uh, the major uh, deficit uh, that we'll have on Mars is deficit in fats. And that's why we have to uh, use like more, uh, more food that, that has fats inside. And uh, the leader here is uh, soy and beans. Uh, they provide good level of fats and proteins. Uh, then uh, more major part of carbon hydrates uh, will be covered by rice and wheat. Uh, then uh, mushrooms uh, looks good for fats and proteins. Uh, algae is also good. And finally, insects will give us uh, animal proteins. And yeah, here is how the diet of colonists will look like. Uh, so there is the core food that I just described. Uh, then, of course, people want to eat something, something tasty at the same time. And uh, additional food will contain some vegetables and berries. And uh, finally, as, as we plan, uh, there also will be some options for fish and meat. Uh, but probably it will not be uh, like the basic diet, uh, but there could be some entrepreneurs on Mars uh, that will grow uh, tilapia or, or goats. Mm -hmm. uh, and maybe chicken, and yeah, this is how uh, colonies will get a more uh, diverse uh, diet. Uh, and uh, as, we, as I described the diet, so now let's see how we will actually grow it. Uh, we will definitely use uh, hydroponics uh, because uh, it allows like, regular lighting, uh, nutrient composition that could be uh, managed, uh, temperature and humidity, and CO2 level that we can also control. And uh, by controlling these parameters, we can get yields that are uh, 10 times larger than from traditional uh, ways of growing food. And uh, if we look at the requirements uh, to hydroponics, then uh, actually 30 square meter per person will be enough, uh, which is quite, quite a nice number. Uh, some uh, Soviet uh, research told that uh, people can even afford uh, can use 15 a square meter per person, but that was based only on wheat, and it was quite um, like not 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 very nice uh, diet. So uh, I, th I think 30 square meters should be enough to get a quite wide range of uh, of nutrients. And um, uh, hydroponics is also good because we can uh, recover larger part of the water. And uh, we calculated that for the whole colony, we will only use uh, 8.3 cubic meters a day of new water. So all the other water will be recovered. Uh, and uh, this is how this greenhouse uh, will look like. Uh, we analyzed uh, a lot of different layouts uh, from the point of heat losses and radiation. And uh, this is the uh, layout that we uh, decided, th that we found out and created. And uh, it, looks, um, um, it, it looks very good from the point of heat losses. Uh, because if we uh, don't bury uh, the greenhouse inside the, uh, inside the Martian soil, then we get like, really strong uh, heat losses through infrared uh, heat transfer. Uh, but then if we uh, just uh, bury it inside, then we can get like really, really low, uh, really low uh, losses, something like 72 kilowatts uh, a day will be, 72 kilowatts will be enough to make uh, warm uh, all these uh, greenhouses. Uh, and it's also an interesting question about radiation. Uh, because right now there are like different researches that um, discuss if it's possible to grow food on the surface or it should be grown subsurface. 
so we uh, decided to select something in the middle. Uh, so we uh, still put um, greenhouse under the surface, uh, but there is an access uh, from the sunlight uh, to these uh, greenhouse greenhouses. And this is how we can at the same time reduce radiation level and get uh, natural sunlight uh, to grow food in, uh, in a regular way. Uh, and uh, we also uh, have the system of lens. So there are two lens. Uh, one is a big convex that concentrates sunlight uh, to the one point uh, on, the, on the surface. And then at that point, there is another lens that uh, dissipates uh, the sunlight inside inside the greenhouse. And uh, the system allows to uh, get uh, sunlight for for nine hours uh, with a very nice concentration that should be enough to to actually heat uh, greenhouses and to and to provide enough sunlight for uh, for plants. And um, in terms of uh, materials that we we'll, uh, are going to use is uh, that we are going to use steel tubes, uh, three millimeter thick, uh, with diameter of three meter. And uh, the pressure inside greenhouses will be uh, 0 0.3 atmosphere, uh, which is enough to have uh, the right uh, proportion of gases inside. Uh, inside greenhouses. And the arc uh, that, uh, uh, that uh, in the arc where the Beconvex lens is mounted uh, has a diameter of 3.5 meters. And uh, this uh, lens could move according to the sun. So basically, uh, as the sun moves, we can move these lenses. And the base is located uh, close to the equator, so we always have very nice uh, angle of the sun. And uh, these lenses can operate uh, at the minimal angle of 28 degrees, because if it's lower, then they just uh, they just uh, go inside the uh, inside the soil. And with this composition, uh, we. Uh, calculates that we will need uh, 26 kilometers of greenhouses. Uh, and yeah, if we have several rows of these greenhouses, then it could be quite uh, compact. And we uh, looked at different materials, uh, and steel was the most uh, preferable because in order to produce it, we uh, will just need uh, 113 kilowatt hour for one meter of tube. Uh, bricks are also good, but a bit, uh, uh, but but with a bit less performance. And if we want to try to use some Kevlar that we have to bring from uh, from Earth, uh, then uh, the cost for this will be um, like uh, 40, 40 times larger. And yeah, so this is how we are going to grow it. And uh, of course, it's also important to look at how we will do the whole food, food chain, uh, how we produce it, how we transport it to storages inside the colony, how we then move it to canteens and how we cook it, and then how we collect wastes and recycle. So all this will be done through mostly by robots, and people will just uh, operate and maintain the, those robots. Um, yes, so this is more or less a uh, picture that I would like to, uh, would like to describe. And uh, here is one idea that we've got from this exercise. Uh, basically, there are a lot of unknowns uh, in this design. So for example, what will be the radiation that is accumulated in food, uh, how the food will grow on the, on the sun on, on, on Mars and uh, how these robots can move independent uh, can work independently of people and uh, one of the idea is to organize some mars mars food mission where we can actually send like small greenhouse uh, to mars uh, which which will be completely autonomous 
and uh, that will contain uh, robots that will do all the job uh, and it will have some supplies of seeds of maybe different uh, types of cultures uh, it, and we will have some water and nutrients inside uh, with a storage where we can actually store uh, the uh, food that we grow and uh, finally we can uh, can put uh, sensors that measure like radiation level and other important parameters and by this we can actually test uh, this concept uh, without like moving people to Mars and uh, well it, it could be done with some uh, w w like if uh, NASA or ESA send some rovers there uh, and yeah if somebody is interested to discuss it and maybe make it happen uh, you are more than welcome thank you Yes, please. We. Uh, so you asked if we can grow wheat. Yeah, yeah. Why not? I think we can grow anything, because like everything just require water and nutrients to be grown. Sorry, you, you use the bread or? No, no, I just say that we're used to eating bread, you know. That's all, uh, you know. Of course. So, so this would be a meatless diet then, huh? Yeah, it would be quite vegetarian. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the reality. Because meat requires much more energy and water to, to produce. And the less steps we have in this food chain, the better. So, uh, yeah, I guess we're mm -hmm. for a um, so um, have you con considered different forms of diets that people may elect? Like, for example, a ketogenic diet and m what that might imply for your selection of food items. And number, my number two question is, how do you decide that the person is uh, uh, responding? in a healthy way to the diet that you do provide? Yeah, that's, that's very good questions. And we analyzed like very different types of uh, diets and we looked at like standard diets for, uh, for ISS and for other like space missions. Uh, and um, so what we found out is that, um, yeah, this type of, uh, this type of diet like should be should be nice for, for, for most people. Uh, of course, uh, yeah, people sh should go to Mars and they sh should understand that they have to eat what, what, is, uh, what is provided because there are no other options. And of course, people have to try this diet in advance uh, to their flight to Mars. And my second question, how do you evaluate how the people are responding to the diet? Mm -hmm. um, I would say, we don't know yet, we didn't test it, uh, and of course there should be some tests to, to prove that it actually works. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, um, I also want to try two questions. One is, um, how does your, your um, greenhouse work during solar storm, not solar storms, but during dust storms when the solar load is a lot lower for long periods of time? So that's one question. And the other question is, insects tend to taste like what they've eaten. And if they've been eating junk, they taste like junk. And so how would you go about feeding the insects so that they're, they're tasting pollen? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, very, very good question. Um, so, f so for the first question, of course, it's, it's a problem uh, with dust storm. So if we have it, then we, can, we should either uh, provide light in, inside greenhouses, or we should just have enough uh, food reserve to survive through dust storms. Uh, that's why in our calculation, we took the factor three uh, and uh, actually like 30 uh, meet square meters per person was enough, but we took 90 just to make sure that we can survive through the dust storms. And, and yeah, and the second question, uh, could you please remind it? Um, 
how do you make sure that the insects will eat food that will make them tasty? Because they tend to reflect what they taste, what they've been eating. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. Um, yeah, there are a lot of tests with insects. Uh, and yeah, there could be some genetic modification of these insects. So I think uh, that uh, GMO will be a part of this diet. <laughs> So if people don't like GMO, then probably they will not go to Mars, at least at the first uh, 1,000 people. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you. I'm no uh, connoisseur of insects, but uh, I think a greenhouse has a very innovative way to approach the thermal management issue of greenhouses on Mars. That's great. Um, Thank my you. question is, um, the lens that you show, you showed it in a cross section, so that lens would go the total length of whatever buried greenhouse you had. So you're looking at like a 30 meter long lens. So you're looking at a 30 meter long lens to provide the light. Yeah, basically. Greenhouse. Yeah, in, on Mars we'll have a, a lot of materials to do glass, and we will have very long, long lens. And yeah, they will move so that the direction of the greenhouse should be uh, from north to south, and then as the sun moves from uh, east to, uh, from from east to west, yeah, we always move uh, synchronously all these uh, lenses. All right, that's it's a pretty heavy lens, though. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty heavy, but yeah, a, a, as we looked at dif different options. Uh, we found that uh, uh, that glass is really uh, easy to produce on Mars, and that's why we can produce it in very large amounts. And uh, these steel arcs uh, can uh, can handle this weight, so there should not be a, a problem. Right, right, sure. It's it's not only it's not only one lens for 26 kilometers. Mm -hmm. One yeah, more question. I Thank was wondering you. if you could speak to uh, the construction of this greenhouse and if you put any thought into that. Uh, well, what do you mean by instruction? Uh, sorry, uh, how it would be constructed. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh, so basically um, we will need to have uh, the steel tubes and uh, we will need to have lenses. Uh, so we uh, will have to bore, uh, we have to bore the soil, put uh, uh, put these uh, tubes inside and then put arcs and then put uh, these lenses on top of arcs. So basically it's not the, the, the easiest way I would say but uh, there is nothing that like well-educated robots uh, cannot do here. <laughs> Just one more question. Do, do we have time? For, for the mm -hmm. last question. Yeah. I, have you thought about the nutrients that will be required as inputs into the into the uh, hydroponic process, um, and whether those will be available uh, will be mined locally, or whether they will need to be imported uh, uh, from Earth? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's a good question. I think the only uh, bottleneck here is uh, phosphorus, uh, but it could can also be uh, collected from uh, appetites. Uh, that's that are presented on Mars, so we still have to find them, but um, that's not the like not not very uh, like large part of the total nutrient balance. Thank you.